On the screen now, you see the graph of y equals the sine of x from 0 to 2 pi, and the graph of y equals the cosine of x. And in both of these graphs, there's not a lot going on. And when I say that, I mean the amplitude of both graphs are 1. The fundamental period in both waves are 2 pi. And there isn't a vertical shift in either graph. In this video, I will talk about writing the equations of sine and cosine waves given their graphs, even when there is a change in amplitude, a change in fundamental period, and a vertical shift. Let's begin. The first graph we'll look at and write the equation for is pictured on the screen here on the right. In the top left hand corner I have the graph of y equals sine of x and y equals the cosine of x. These are the basic graphs of sines and cosines if there's no phase shift or vertical shift. And the graph of the sine will begin at the origin. It will rise to its highest point and fall back to the x-axis halfway through one cycle of the graph before falling to its low point and returning to the x-axis to complete one cycle. On the other hand, the graph of y equals cosine of x starts at its highest point and falls to its lowest point halfway through one cycle and then returns to where it started, its highest point, at the completion of one cycle. And what we'll do when we write an equation is we'll first identify whether the curve looks more like a sine or a cosine wave. And in our first problem here, we can see that it does begin at the origin. It rises and then falls back to the x-axis and then falls to its lowest point before returning to the x-axis. What I've outlined in black on the screen, on the large graph, clearly uh, is more representative of a sine curve. So when I write this equation, I'm going to write y equals the sine as my first step, but I'm going to leave room for some other parts that could be included in the equation, including first, a value that could be multiplied by the sine. This value in the front, often abbreviated A, is associated with the amplitude of the wave. And then we'll always be taking the sine of an angle, and in our equation, part of our angle will definitely have a factor of x, but it could be multiplied by another value. The x itself could have a coefficient. That's commonly abbreviated with a capital letter B and is associated with the fundamental period of the wave. And then finally, there could be a number added or subtracted at the end, and that value would be, is often abbreviated C, and would be associated with a vertical shift if the wave has one. And that's the next thing we'll determine, is if the curve has a vertical shift or not. And what I'll do to identify uh, whether it has a vertical shift is basically identify the middle of the graph, the, the vertical middle of the graph, by looking at its highest point, looking at the wave's highest point, which in this case is 2, and the wave's lowest point, which is negative 2, and then going halfway in between those values. Halfway between 0 and negative 2 is actually 0. So there is not a vertical shift on this wave because halfway between negative 2 and 2 is 0, which is just the x-axis. So this wave is not shifted up or down in the coordinate plane. The vertical shift in this wave is 0. So the value of c would be 0 in this equation. When I write my final answer, when I write the final equation for this wave, I will not include a plus zero at the end, but the value of C is actually zero. The next step in writing the equation is to identify the amplitude. And once you get that uh, vertical center, which I said was the x-axis in this one, finding the amplitude is fairly easy. The amplitude is the number of units from the center to the graph's highest point which will be the same as the number of units from that center to the graph's lowest point. And in this case, those are both two units. It is two units to the highest point and two units to the lowest point for this wave. So that means the amplitude, the value of the amplitude is two. And that is the value of A. In this case, that's the value of A. So this equation will be Y equals two times the sine and finally, we want to find the value of b. And I said earlier, the value of b is associated with the fundamental period. It's not actually the fundamental period, but it's associated with the fundamental period 
and the fundamental period is the number of units on the x-axis that it takes for the graph to complete one cycle. And on this wave, again, we said that it was a sine wave, and a sine wave begins um, kind of at its center, rises to its highest point, falls to its lowest point, and then ends in the same vertical location as it started. And after one cycle of the graph, I can see that I've gone two pi units along the x-axis. And that two pi units, that's the number of units it took to complete one cycle of the graph, that's known as the fundamental period of the graph. And so in this case, it's two pi. That is not the value of b. That is not the value of b. There's an equation that relates the fundamental period with the value of b, and that equation is what I have in a box on the screen. It's that the fundamental period is equal to 2 pi over b. The fundamental period is 2 pi over b. In this case, the fundamental period I've identified as 2 pi, so I have an equation now to solve for b. I have an equation to solve for b. And perhaps the, a good first step in this equation to solve for b would be to multiply both sides of the equation by b. And that results in canceling out the b on the right side of the equation. And I have b times 2 pi equals 2 pi, at which point you could divide both sides of the equation by 2 pi and find that b equals 1. b equals 1. So in this equation, the value of b, it's not 2 pi, the fundamental period is 2 pi, but the value of b is 1. So now I have found a value for a, 2, a value for b, 1, and a value for c. I've identified that this wave can be described as a sine wave, so I'm ready to write my final equation, and it is this, y equals 2 sine, and now the value of b was 1, I don't have to write 1x, I can just write x, and because the value of c was 0, I don't have to write plus 0, I can call y equals 2 sine of x the equation for this graph. Next, let's take a look at this wave and determine its equation. Determine its equation. I'll begin by determining if I want to describe this as a sine or a cosine by starting, I'm going to start right at the y-axis and trace through one cycle of the graph. This graph is starting and it falls right off the bat to a low point before returning to the same vertical location where it started after 4 pi radians. And this wave that I've outlined in black can best, best fits the form of a cosine wave. So when I write this equation, I'll be writing a cosine equation. And just like the previous example, when I write this, there could be a value for A associated with the amplitude, but now I know that it's a cosine. There could be a value of B associated with the fundamental period. And there could be a number added or subtracted at the end, which is the vertical shift. Just like the previous problem, I'll begin with the vertical shift. And again, the way to identify the vertical shift is to take a look at the highest point, which in this case is 1, and the lowest point, which in this case is negative 5, and go halfway between 1 and negative 5. Halfway between 1 and negative 5 is negative 2. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a vertical line right uh, past negative 2. Basically, I'm, I'm graphing the line x equals negative 2. And that's the vertical center of this graph, so of this wave. This entire wave has been shifted down two units. There has been a vertical shift, and it's down two units. So what that means is that the value of c is going to be negative 2. I'm going to subtract 2 at the end of this equation. When I write my final equation, I won't write the last term as plus negative 2. I'll just write minus 2. But there is a vertical shift two units down from the x-axis. Next, we're going to use this blue line that I've drawn on the screen as the vertical center and use it to help us identify this wave's amplitude because amplitude is the number of units from that center that it takes to get to its lowest point, which will be the same as the number of units that it takes to get to its highest point from that center. So 
the number of units from the center to the lowest point is is one two three units negative two negative three negative four negative five three units and that's the same as the number of units from negative two the vertical center up to the highest point which is one unit above the x-axis the amplitude is three the amplitude is three in this case and that's associated with a value that is often abbreviated a it's the number that's multiplied in the front of the equation multiplied times the cosine in this case and then finally the fundamental period how many units does it take to complete one cycle of this graph well when i began this problem i outlined one cycle of the wave in black and that was completed after four pi radians so the fundamental period is four pi radians and that sets up a little equation the way that the fundamental period is related to the value of b that goes in the equation is in the fundamental period is 2 pi over b so i have a little equation that i'll solve for b i'll first multiply both sides of the equation by b and that means that 4 pi times b equals 2 pi and then when you divide both sides of the equation by 4 pi you have 2 pi divided by 4 pi the pi's are going to cancel out and 2 over 4 in lowest terms is 1 half so the value of b the coefficient on x is 1 half so in this equation a is 3 b is 1 half and c is negative 2 so the best way to state this final equation is y equals 3 cosine one half x minus two y equals three cosine one half x minus two is the graph that's pictured on the screen our final example will be to write the equation of this graph and i'll begin by outlining tracing one cycle of the graph i'll start at the y-axis and and trace one cycle of this wave i'm tracing until the wave begins to repeat itself I've done so at this point this this wave starts at the point zero one it goes down back up rises to its high point and then completes one cycle after pi over two radians on the x-axis now I'm going to start by determining whether this is a sine or a cosine and it, it, it is a sine curve but it, it's not y equals the sine of x it hasn't started at the origin gone up then back down before going back to its starting point it started and then gone down it started and immediately went to its lowest point before returning to its highest point point. and in situations like that you could describe that as a rotation around the x-axis basically the wave is upside down this is a sine wave but it's upside down and like any function or any equation that's in the form y equals a negative a factor of negative one in the front will result in the graph being rotated around the x-axis or flipped upside down so this will be a sine curve but it's a negative sine curve so when i write this equation i'm going to start out with y equals negative i'm going to leave space for a value of a and then write a sign leave space for a value of b and at the end i will add a value of c I'll begin with that value of C, the vertical shift. The way to identify the vertical shift is take a look at where the highest point is, two units above the x-axis in this case, and the lowest point, in this case is zero, and go halfway between zero and two. I'm gonna draw a vertical line there. Halfway between zero and two is one. So there is a that means there's a vertical shift here of one unit up. This entire wave is shifted one unit above the x-axis so the value of c will be positive one this equation will have a plus one at the end next the amplitude from that vertical center the blue vertical line that i've drawn earlier how many units is it to the high point that's the same as how many units is it to the low point well from that center to the high point is just one unit and from that center to the low point is just one unit so the amplitude is one the value of a in this case is one so this equation will begin y equals negative one times the sine of something times x 
I won't write the one when I write my final answer. Finally, the fundamental period. How many units along the x-axis does it take to complete one cycle of the wave? Earlier, when I originally traced one cycle of the wave, I found that it was complete after pi over 2 radians. So the fundamental period is pi over 2, and that creates the equation since the fundamental period equals 2 pi over b. In this case, pi over 2 equals 2 pi over b. And then I have to solve this equation for b. I have to solve this equation for b. There's a couple ways you could approach solving this equation. Since I have uh, two fractions that are equal here, I'm going to, to cross multiply, and I'll, I'll write this as b times pi equals 4 pi. And then divide both sides of the equation by pi. When you divide 4 pi by pi, pi divided by pi is 1, and that leaves you with a value of 4 for b. The value of b is 4 in this equation. And at this point, we've identified all the parts that we need to write this complete equation since the number in front of the sign is negative 1, the value of b is 4, and the value of c is positive 1. The equation of the wave shown on the screen is y equals negative sine of 4x plus 1.